If you like this video, please press like and consider subscribing. Thank you. Road ahead for Boeing's and future NASA troubled mega rocket space launch system remains questionable. Although I've been talking about SLS, SpaceX and Blue Origin as potential rivals in bid to attract important heavy payload cargo, especially in heavy commercialized environment where several companies are competing for the same slice of the market. So it will not come as a surprise as I type this text that NASA is concerned with the future of SLS and if SLS can deliver what is really a tight timetable looking ahead. Since current administration announced plans for manned return to the moon by 2024 and the commercial tenders are being issued to a number of aerospace companies. Sadly, Boeing isn't one of them due to being unreliable and the cost associated with SLS and constant delays gave NASA concerns that Boeing won't be able to deliver on any of its objectives, thus delaying return to the moon by 2024. First of all, I would like to thank all of my subscribers, but above all, the Patreon supporters and fans of my channel for your massive support. Anyone likes what I do, please consider supporting me through Patreon. It really helps, especially now that I need to buy a new ultra-wide 35-inch monitor and parts for my new computer. Current build is from 2015, monitor from 2012. Also, check out my YouTube community page tab and join the conversation. You can also suggest topics for a future video. I would also like to thank Casper Bertensel for his generous donation towards my channel. Thank you very much. Not surprisingly, NASA is already contemplating the retirement of SLS before very first initial flight. The spectacular failure, if rumors are true, as reported by Business Insider, this would be a massive blow to Boeing who's been betting on SLS and 14 missions already agreed with the NASA. The missions, all to be executed between 2021 and 2028, would have cemented Boeing's reputation and credibility. However, with early departure for SLS, perhaps only after two missions, could end Boeing's future space endeavors for foreseeable time, perhaps even end it. So why sudden change of direction for NASA? Well, the emergence of two major competitors, the Blue Origin and SpaceX, who are largely developing their own space architecture from grounds up, based on in-house technology in case of Blue Origin, this is BE-3, BE-7 and BE-4 rocket engines, New Shepard suborbital vehicles and first of the orbital vehicles, the New Glenn rocket, which is the smallest of the future Blue Origins orbital vehicles. SpaceX is also working on some really interesting stuff. The already developed Falcon architecture, which SpaceX worked on since 2012. The Merlin 1D rocket engine, the mainstay of Falcon architecture, is revolutionary in the design. Due to high efficiency and enormous chamber pressure, giving SpaceX incredible power, SpaceX Falcon Heavy is currently the most powerful rocket in use. The rocket consists of three Falcon 9 cores strapped together to give Falcon Heavy incredible lift capability, capable of 64 ton payload into low Earth orbit and at least half that into geostationary orbit. Falcon Heavy could deliver up to 20 tons to the surface of the Moon and potentially 16 tons to the surface of Mars. Although these two rockets, Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, are currently the mainstay of SpaceX architecture, SpaceX is currently developing even more powerful rocket that will even dwarf SLS currently under development by the Boeing. The SpaceX BFR or the Starship and Super Heavy, components of the future SpaceX Super Heavy launch capability, will give SpaceX unquestionable advantage over any competitor. To power the future system, SpaceX is developing powerful rocket engine aptly named the Raptor, which should give SpaceX incredible lift capability. The Raptor rocket engine, like its predecessor, the Merlin 1D rocket engine, has incredible power output of 2,000 kN or 200 ton lift. A single engine with a chamber pressure of 300 bars or whopping 4,400 psi. Although both SpaceX and Blue Origin have largely relied on their own development, 
the NASA and US government provided considerable funding for both emerging space agencies, with Blue Origin benefiting from early US Air Force funding for its rocket engine, which substantially culminated in contract with United Launch Alliance for a number of B-4 rocket engines for its own Vulcan rocket program. However, before we sign SLS to early grave, SLS might be still useful to a degree. At least, NASA hopes to utilize MegaRocket for early 2020s missions, which could culminate in the first manned mission with SLS, also known as EM-2 or Exploration Mission 2, which could see SLS do moon flyby. However, due to enormous cost of the rocket, between $535-580 million per launch, it is not clear if SLS is sustainable, concept NASA could rely on in the long run. Unless NASA received massive increase in funding in coming years, especially in human spaceflight, I simply don't see how it is possible for SLS to remain viable when alternatives are somewhat cheaper and will be ready by 2022-2023, ahead of SLS manned capability. So far, NASA spent some $12 billion on SLS program, with further $5 billion to be spent on the program in the next 24 months. SLS will cost NASA at least $17 billion before very first rocket has taken off. Add to this, each SLS rocket launch could cost anywhere between $535 million for the smallest version, Block 1B, to anywhere near $1 billion for B2 version. Enormous sums NASA simply doesn't have and will need to look to other space launch operators to ensure it can fulfill its manned spaceflight needs and Moon and Mars bound programs in not too distant future. The constant delays and increasing cost of SLS development has put strains on NASA and its finances. In the past, manned missions, in particular beyond Earth, were unthinkable due to bloated costs associated with the rocket development. We can't blame Boeing and others for the cost, as developing reusable rockets and applying reusability wasn't practical in 60s and 70s, and even in the 80s. However, with the arrival of SpaceX and Blue Origin, old aerospace giants such as Lockheed Martin and Boeing couldn't compete on the cost due to their sheer size and lack of flexibility. Employing 10,000 highly qualified people worked in the past when you were the only company launching stuff into space. However, launch costs have dramatically fallen in the past few years. Doing things as usual, set in all ways, won't work in 21st century space race. The fact Airbus just announced it is working on its own reusable 25 to 30 ton payload rocket to replace not Ariane 5 but Ariane 6, which is yet to enter service is a hint to Boeing and Lockheed Martin. Time to adapt, change or wither. We'll see if Boeing got a hint from SLS fallout or it will continue in its merry ways. I certainly hope it is in the latter. It will be damn waste of good company. I would like to take the opportunity to express my gratitude to all of you, my subscribers, but in particular to Dawn of Spaceship, a fellow subscriber and highly talented and kind supporter of my channel. He 3D printed a model of Starship and Super Heavy for me. With such great detail and accuracy, I am literally lost for words. His channel is Dawn of Spaceship, where he talks about stuff like SpaceX, Starship, but also other stuff that might be of great interest to you all. The link is in the description. Please check out his channel and consider subscribing to him. He certainly deserves all your support. Thank you.